Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Bramble Gaming, and I'm sure that we can all agree that the Octo expansion in Splatoon 2 is pretty darn challenging. Sure, there are some moderately easy challenges in the expansion, such as the Labyrinth Station or the Plastic Station, but the game developers made sure to balance out these easy levels with challenges that are really, really bloody difficult. So today, I decided to list the 10 hardest Octo expansion challenges, in my opinion. For record, I'll be ranking these challenges based upon how hard they are when using that weapon with the highest reward. With all that said, let's start the list. Barely making the list, we first have the Target Buster Station with the Carbon Roller. This station presents you with the challenge of breaking 35 consecutive crates in order to pass the test. However, you are only given 35 seconds to accomplish this task. And this timer is where the real challenge comes from. The time limit is so restrictive that it forces you to perform a near pixel perfect run of this level to beat it, because more often than not you'll run out of time, miss one of the boxes on the grind rail, or run out of ink right before you break the last box, which takes like a million hits to break. For these reasons, the target buster for station gets put as number 10 on our list. The can't touch the station is also certainly one of the hardest, but in a unique way. You're put up against an Octo Canyon type of level with the objective of getting to the goal without taking any damage. Not only that, but you also can't step in any enemy ink. This may sound easy, but when using the roller in this level, which isn't the best weapon for inking the ground, the can't touch the station becomes quite the challenge. This is especially true when you're put up against enemies such as Octo Snipers and Twin Co Octo Troopers in this stage, who will immediately make you fail the test if you try and defeat them by just rushing in. In addition to this, the can't touch the station is decently lengthy for an Octo expansion level, so it definitely deserves to be on this list. And at number 8, we have the Dinky Ink Station with the Luna Blaster, where you're forced to make it to the end of the level with only half of your ink tank and no natural ability to fill it back up. The problem is, there are wrapped up crates blocking the way which you have to break to proceed, forcing you to take a side path and defeat certain enemies to get enough ink to proceed. Keep in mind that the Luna Blaster is the weapon that's being used, which takes up a huge chunk of ink every time it's fired, forcing you to be extremely precise with your shots. If you miss one singular shot while fighting these enemies, then you've basically already failed the challenge. Oh yeah, and the enemies you're forced to face also have the dodging headgear, which makes it twice as easy to miss. Dinky Ink is one of the most precise challenges in this expansion, and for that reason, it's also one of the most difficult. So y'all remember how in the Octo Canyon that the, some of the hardest levels were the ones with moving platforms, right? Well, Ride With Me Station with the blasters is entirely based upon moving floating platforms, except that the platforms are now cars. Since these cars are moving the whole time, trying to jump from one to the next without getting shot, falling off, or missing the jump entirely is extremely difficult. And then, if it wasn't bad enough, at the end of the level you ride a car and play Flappy Bird with it! Everyone loves Flappy Bird! Oh, and better watch that ink tank, cause if you run out of it, you'll fall to your doom. Gosh, I hate this level. Ink and Watch Station, number 6 on our list, is all about precision, just like the Dirty Ink Station. You're given enough ink to do 6 vertical flings with your roller, and with that limited ink, you're expected to break 15 crates. Oh yeah, not stationary crates, nah, these crates are on octo washers that move diagonally. You have to be so excruciatingly precise with your vertical swings during this level, to where if you miss even once, then you might as well just restart. That, and it's so easy to get hit off the ledge by the octo washers. But yeah, that's really all I have to say about this level. It's short, but with the precision which you need to complete it makes it one of the hardest in this expansion. And here we have the Move It Move It Station, which is probably the most rage inducing level on this list, despite not being the hardest. In this challenge, you're forced to dodge all attacks from enemies for 30 seconds straight, for if you get hit even once, it's game over and you're forced to pay the entry fee again if you want to continue. While 30 seconds may not sound like it's a long time, it really is when you're forced to dodge the fire of 3 Octo Troopers and an Octo Sniper at the same time. This level gave so many streamers so much trouble, and for good reason. It's pretty dang hard to figure out the pattern in which you need to dodge, and even when you figure it out, it's easy to slip up and accidentally get hit. Ah yes, the Bomb Boozler, what may indeed be one of the worst weapons in its game. 
While its charge speed may be extremely fast, its range is so abominable that almost nobody uses this piece of trash weapon. Now imagine having to use this weapon in a fast paced sniping gallery where you have to break 30 crates while constantly riding on grind rails and trying to avoid octo washers and great walls and trying not to fall to your death and trying not to miss a crate and trying not to run out of ink but messing up on all these aspects and having to restart the whole freaking level all over again. <laughs> Did I mention that you're using the worst weapon in this game to break all 30 crates? Yeah. Next. And in the Footloose Station, the whole floor is composed of breakable boxes, which will not only break if your ink hits them, they will also break if enemy ink hits them. The highest paying weapon for this challenge is the Ink Brush, which is the weapon that's all about inking the ground. Put these two together and you have one absolute hell of a level. Not only do you have to defeat 10 enemies on a small breakable platform, but you're also required to defeat them within the time limit of 3 minutes, with each wave spawning after 1 minute regardless of whether the first wave had been entirely defeated. Time after time I'd just fall to my death because I'd accidentally ink the boxes below me, immediately causing them to break. If you're going for 100% in the Yaku expansion, <laughs> good luck beating this level with the ink brush. You'll need it. Now this level is unique because it comes straight from the developers of Dark Souls. <laughs> It's unique because the difficulty is the same no matter which weapon you take and try and beat it. In the Girl Power Station, you have to defend a power orb from an onslaught of Octolings, each equipped with different weapons and specials who will come at you from all directions over the course of this level. To be able to pass this test, you have to be able to defend it for a minute and 30 seconds without it running out of health and exploding. Sound easy? Well, imagine a trio of Octolings each attacking the orb with a Stingray, Inkjet, and equipping themselves with Ink Armor all at the same time. In situations like that, the orb will run out of health in 2 seconds flat. This challenge is just so hard because it's so easy to only focus on defeating one Octoling when there could be 5 others on the map going for the orb at the same time. On top of this, it's so hard to deal with the Octolings all at once as they'll just pull out their specials immediately when they're in trouble. Despite this level's difficulty though, it's actually fun. I think this level is one of the most creative and well designed challenges in the expansion. However, I have to say the opposite about number one on this list. Not only is it the hardest challenge in the Octa expansion, in my opinion, but it's also one if not the worst design choice for a level in this game. But before I get to the hardest level in the Octa expansion, here are some honorable mentions. And finally, the hardest challenge in the Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion is... The Matchmaker Station with the Rapid Blaster. You haven't experienced true Splatoon frustration and rage until you've played and completed this level with this weapon. In this challenge, you're supposed to break the orange boxes so that the shape on the right matches the shape on the left. Sounds easy, right? Except that you're forced to break the boxes with a rapid blaster, which will break any boxes around the orange boxes if you aren't extremely precise with your shots. And if you break one singular wrong box, you'll be killed and all of your progress reset. Oh, you only have one orange box left and you mess up the shot? Too bad, fool, now do it all over again. This challenge is only so hard and frustrating because of how long it takes. It's just so boring. Breaking box after box while being extremely precise, only to mess up and have to look at all the boxes you have to break again. 
times like these, you'll probably just say, no way in hell am I doing that again. Well, y'all, those were what I thought were the 10 hardest Aku expansion challenges in Splatoon 2. Do you have another challenge that you think should have made it on this list? Let me know by commenting down below and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post another video. With all that said, Bramble Gaming, over and out.